E-bikes are fantastic. E-bikes are brilliant. But do you go E-road or E-gravel? We're going to explain the differences between both and go through their relative strengths and weaknesses so that you can decide which would be best for you. Now, before you even begin to consider whether you would choose an e-road bike or an e-gravel bike, something far more important to consider and decide on is the type of motor system used. And it's incredibly important because it could be the difference between having a bike which gives you a natural ride feeling or having a bike which feels like you're just riding an electric motorbike. Hub-based motors on the rear wheel are typically less expensive than mid-motors mounted in the bike on the cranks, and they're typically less powerful too, and with less torque. Now, this is something that's really noticeable, especially when you're on steep climbs. Hub-based motors are actually also particularly easy to install onto a bike, whereas a mid-based motor system requires the bike and the frame to be designed around it. However, they offer a significant advantage because the bulk of the weight and the system mass is placed centrally and low down on the bike, which has a positive impact on the handling and also gives you that sort of natural ride feeling. Now we've got a couple of mega bikes from BMC and they're fitted with the TQ motor system. And it's actually thanks to the support from TQ Motors that we're able to make this video. TQ Motors is a German company and has a background in robotics engineering and have manufactured parts for Mars rovers. That engineering expertise is now being put to use in e-bike motors and the result is this very small but mighty TQ HPR 50 unit that punches well above its weight but is also very quiet. I'm riding the BMC Road Machine 01 Amp X, which is an e-gravel bike, and Ollie's riding the BMC Road Machine 01 Amp, which is an e-road bike. But to illustrate the differences, let's do some riding. Fundamentally, riding any e-bike has the ability to make more roads more accessible to a wider range of riders which is a great thing. Look at the roads like this. Woo. However, when you are riding out on beautiful roads and you see a nice gravel track darting off to the side, well, you've got the option to simply head off and explore thanks to the gravel bike. And that is one of the big advantages of gravel. It has that extra capability. It's a personal thing, right? You see, Ollie's more than content just cruising around on the roads. But for me, it's all about having a mixture of on and off road. That's what I enjoy the most. But to enable me to ride off road and utilize a gravel or e-gravel bike, my bike's actually set up quite different to Ollie's. I've got a single chain ring up front and then at the rear of the bike, I've got this super wide range cassette, which is really helpful when you head off road because it enables you to deal with the rapidly changing speeds and gradients that you're typically faced with. Other changes on this bike compared to Ollie's, well, I've got a suspension stem up front to help soak up some of the bumps and also wider tires with a more aggressive tread pattern. Now, this is something that we're going to speak about a little bit later on in this video in terms of how it affects the motor and the battery performance. I, however, have more road bike style gears on my bike, so my easiest gear isn't quite as easy as Alex's gear, but road climbs tend to be um, a bit you know, easier than steep gravel climbs. Whereas my biggest gear is bigger than Alex's, which will allow me to go at a higher top speed than him when riding on the flat or when the, the road allows for it. So because of that, I've got a double chain set um, on the front and the front derailleur. Also, the cassette at the back is a tighter ratio, which means there's less, uh, well, the gaps between all the individual sprockets are slightly less, which means you can sort of better fine tune your gear selection because changes in speed and gradient on the road tend to be, well, more nuanced than they are off-road. A key difference can be geometry, the angles and lengths of the tube that make up the frame. In the case of these BMC Road Machine amps that we have, they're actually the same, but it's the components and spec where they differ. 
However, with other brands such as Pinarello with their Nitro range, they have different geometry for the gravel and road bikes. The road version is slightly lower at the front end and slightly longer. This allows for a more aerodynamic road riding position, which is something that can help you travel faster on the flats and the downhills. Gravel bikes in general, be that e-assisted or not, will typically be slightly shorter and higher at the front compared to your normal road bike. They're also likely to have a longer wheelbase and a slacker head tube angle, all in search of adding extra stability into the ride and handling characteristics. This is particularly important when you're heading off road to position your body slightly more upright and your weight further back so that when you're going down steep descents or gravel tracks, it doesn't feel like you're just gonna tip over the front of the bike. I want to talk about weight next because e-road and e-gravel bikes are considerably heavier than your normal bike. However, these examples that we've got here today are actually fairly lightweight in the e-bike world. Yeah, so Alex's gravel bike is 13 kilos and my road version is 12.6. So not a big difference, but what you're typically going to see is that the e-road bike is going to be lighter than the e-gravel bike and it's likely to be a bigger difference actually than what you see on these two because these two are using the same frame. But why does weight matter if your bike has a motor? I hear you asking. Well, arguably it's less important, but it still does make a difference in terms of acceleration, how the bike feels, and it'll have an impact on the overall range that you get out of the bike too. TQ say that their motor and battery system is the lightest in its class. Just 3.9 kilograms for this mid-drive motor and the battery which is encased in the down tube. There are of course trade-offs to pay here and that is that this motor may well not be the most powerful out there and it may not give you the greatest range possible but systems that do offer more are considerably heavier. Now this is important to take into account here because a heavier system is gonna have a bigger impact on what the bike is like to ride and how it feels compared to a non-e-assisted bike. The range that you get out of your e-bike is going to be dependent on a whole host of factors, but one of the main things is which level of assist you choose. Now, most e-bikes have different levels of assist, and that's the case with this TQ system. It has low, medium, and full send. But to get a greater idea of how the different level of assist you choose affects the range, TQ gave us some real life data as an example. TQ told us about some testing they did with a 60 kilogram rider who averaged 140 watts of their own power on the Cellar Ronda loop in the Dolomites. Absolutely beautiful uh, area. And I've got the numbers here of what they did. So when using the low level support, um, which offers 78 watts of, of power assistance, um, then they rode 51 kilometers with 1600 meters of elevation and they had over 50% of the battery left. When they used the mid-level support, which gives a maximum assistance of 150 watts, then uh, this rider went 72 kilometers with 2300 meters of elevation and then the battery ran out. And then with the high-level support, uh, which offers a whopping 300 watts of, of maximum assistance, they uh, went 58 and a half kilometres with 1,886 metres of elevation, and then the battery ran out. So it gives you an idea. So if you use less assist, you'll get greater range out of the system. But by far the most significant factor in the difference in range between the two bikes is going to be the tyres and the tyre rolling resistance. So if you were doing an, an absolute max range test with the two bikes on tarmac like this, then the road bike is going to have greater range because the tyres, the slick tyres, are just so much more efficient on this surface with lower rolling resistance. But the overall difference between the two isn't going to be massive, but it might be something that's significant to you. However, for me personally, I think the smart and sensible choice is to go for an e-gravel bike with a mid-mounted motor system, right? Hear me out, because I think by having that system, you're free to chop and change your wheel and tire setup as and when you like, meaning you could have one setup that's ideal for the road, 
and one setup that's ideal for when you head off-road. And that's one of the great things about gravel bikes, or e-gravel bikes, well, is their versatility. Something that is an, an underrated but incredibly important attribute of any e-bike that you might consider is ride feel. You want it to feel natural, like you're riding a normal bike in an unobtrusive way. And some bikes can feel jerky, or if they don't have enough torque, then they just don't give a nice smooth level of assistance. TQ is able to achieve this in part down to some beautiful engineering that's come as a result of their background that they have engineering other things. Now, forgive me for being a bit excited about this because, well, I'm a, unapologetically a, a massive nerd. It's something called the Harmonic Pin Ring Transmission, or HPR, and it's the result of TQ's decades-long experience in the development and engineering of electric motors for robots, satellites, space stations, and Mars rovers. Another interesting detail that many people won't realise is that although these two bikes share the same motor and battery system, the software and electrical wizardry which controls how the power is delivered is actually set differently between the e-road and the e-gravel bike. But crucially, it's also adjustable by you, which is something that many different brands don't actually offer. Now, by enabling you to control how the software delivers the power within the TQ app, it actually allows you to fine tune and control the characteristics of how the bike responds to you. So you can tune it to kind of like personal preference, really. Which is something I have done. So I've gone into the app and then you can fine tune each of the three different motor settings, so low, medium and high, to have them refined to how you choose to have them. Now the three different options that you're able to adjust are in terms of the maximal amount of assistance, which can be applied through each of the settings, and then how the motor takes the effort that you've got and multiplies it up for the motor to then deliver, and then also the speed and rate at which the motor reacts to how quickly you increase your effort. Now what I've done is gone into the app and kind of dialed back effort level low, which means it gives me that tiny little bit of assistance, and I really struggle to notice when the motor is kicking in and keeps everything natural. And then for the mid setting, I've simply set everything slap bang in the middle to have the best of both worlds. And on the high setting, more power baby, we've turned everything up to the max. And the reason I've done that is because when you do want to really rip along a section of trail or you dart up a gravel track which is super steep, you want the bike to apply as much effort as possible and be as reactive as it can to the efforts that you're putting into it. Overall, I think the way to think about it is unobtrusive assistance. It's like riding as you would normally, but with the feeling that you've got a tailwind all the time, which well, is just great fun, isn't it? And I think, you know, these kind of bikes, they have the power to just open up more of the world to, to, to more people, which I just think is fantastic. It is, right. I hope you found this video informative and helpful, and it's helpful you to decide in your mind whether an e-road bike or an e-gravel bike is right for you. So please do let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below. And uh, well, if you did find it helpful, give this video a thumbs up and share it far and wide for all your friends to see. Should we go and enjoy that non-stop tailwind we're gonna have? Love you, bye. Bye.